All right, we'd like to call the uh, this meeting of the county commissioners to uh, order. And we do have a forum here tonight. Um, Commissioner Hawkins is not present tonight. Uh, we're missing, but he's, uh, he is uh, under the weather tonight, so please keep him in your prayers. Um, first order is to call uh, call a word. We do have a forum here. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is we have Tim Talent and Mark Davis have brought their scouts here. Um, and it's uh, from Zion Baptist Church, Cub Scout Troop 118, and they're in the, the Pledge of Allegiance. Guys, if you'd like to do that, and then we have Mr. Hutchinson. Uh, we'll finish the first. Right, Chris. Attention. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Frank, our dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for this opportunity that we can come together and go out and visit the Lord and Jesus. We ask you for wisdom, guidance, and knowledge that we may make the right decisions that will benefit you. Of our county. We ask all this, and we ask you to keep our fellows and in the arms way safe. Not only the ones that serve in the military, but the ones that serve on law enforcement, the ones that provide security in our homes. We ask you for security and safety for them. We ask this all in my name. In Jesus' name, everyone say amen. Amen. Scouts, what can you have y'all stay up here just for a minute? We've We've got something we'd like to give you. You won't come down there with you. See if we can take the picture with you. That's okay. <laughs> Yourself, please. 
Chris Green, Tax Minister, Bill Carr, Planning Director. All right, on to the agenda. The first item on the agenda is to, is to uh, adopt the proposed agenda. Unless there's any changes, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the proposed agenda. Thank you, Mike. I'll second. Uh, first and second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And be opposed. Thank you. Citizen recognition. Um, do we have anyone signed up tonight? Okay. Just Anyone that, that uh, came tonight wishing to speak before the county commissions, uh, um, if you'll come up and identify yourselves, uh, this is the time to do that if you'd like to do that. All right, seeing that. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. And for that, I'll turn it over to our, uh, to, uh, our county manager. Mr. Chair, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here this evening. I have three items under the consent agenda all three budget amendments, all three from the county health department. Uh, budget amendment number 36 is uh, to allow the county to accept $71 in donation uh, that we would budget for medical assist assistance. Budget item number 37 is to allow the county to accept DHH S Healthy Communities Grant in the amount of $6,789 to be put forward for necessary operating expenses. And budget amendment number 38, also from the Health Department, is to accept a $4,000 Rural Health Fund Grant that will be used for a computer software licensing fee. And that computer program will allow the Health Department to look for discounts uh, to purchase medications for patients who qualify through the health department. Those are the three consent agenda items, those three budget amendments for your consideration, Mr. Chair. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Commissioners, you've heard the consent agenda. Is there any question on that? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda. A motion. Second. And a second. Thank you, sir. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? Thank you. Next item on the agenda, I know uh, Commissioner Hawkins is, is uh, uh, really wanted to be here for this. Um, he had a big part in this, um, as well as Commissioner Hutchins <coughs> and Commissioner Holbrook as well, um, where they spearheaded this. But uh, I'll turn the meeting over now to Commissioner Hutchins for some special recognition. Well, I'll go down and uh, uh, I'll move you. Please come up and bring your wife with you if you'd like. Uh, Let's go down with him. We've got a resolution. We all get down here. Here we turn to you. It says Resolution in honor of Dr. Steve Thornburg, North Carolina Community College's President of the Year. Whereas, in 1991, Dr. Steve Thornburg joined Cleveland Community College as the second president in Cleveland Community College history. And whereas, since becoming president, Dr. Thornburg has worked tirelessly to make Cleveland Community College one of the top community colleges in the state. And whereas, as the nation has become more technology driven under the direction of Dr. Thornburg, Cleveland Community College has developed many new programs such as automation engineering technology, surgical technology, and biotechnology. And whereas, the addition of these programs has led to not, not only to the growth in student population, but the need for new facilities and resources. And whereas, during Dr. Thornburg's tenure, the Cleveland Community College campus has grown to include state-of-the-art facilities such as the Paxoy Technology Center, the Bailey Allied Health Center, and the Health and Science Center, the Brown Emergency Training Center, and the LeGrand Center. And whereas, Dr. Thornburg has actively engaged with potential economic development clients by offering incentives and creating new programs for training of employees, specifically programs designed to train the local workforce for positions required by data centers, which has led to the increased recruitment of data centers. And whereas, most recently, under Dr. Thornburg's guidance, Cleveland Community College led a consortium of higher education institutions 
and was awarded more than $23 million as part of the U.S. Department of Labor's Trade Adjustment Assistance Community College and Career Training Grant Program. And whereas, Dr. Thornburg has also been an active member of the Cleveland County community by serving on countless boards and serving as chair of many of them. Now, therefore, we, the Cleveland County Board of Commissioners, congratulate Dr. Steve Thornburg for being named the Wells Fargo, North Carolina Community College President of the Year. Adopted this the fourth day of February, That's been a tribute that marks his leadership, and he has an unbelievable team uh, that has done remarkable things that he either tweaks and fine tunes uh, to get it to the finishing point. And I, I don't know any community college, any president in this country, be it a uh, major university or private college or what have you, that uh, could say that. My, my, my team has been the recipients of the $23 million federal grant. And this award, uh, I think, is long overdue personally, but I'm sure that uh, it may, it's got to make him feel good because anytime you're recognized by your peers as being outstanding, it makes you feel good. And my words are that it should make you feel good, but it's long overdue. And we're very proud of you and your team and all that college does. And, made a comment earlier this evening when we were talking. Uh, the things that are within the walls of that place are astounding. And when you get people from China, Germany, and other places in the world coming through those facilities and making some decisions on economic development because of the facilities and the automation and the technology that are existing within those walls, it's unbelievable. And uh, there's great things in store for this county. A lot of it's made possible by his leadership at the college. Thank you very much. 
Dr. Thornburg, I, I also commend you for the leadership that you have shown to the college and our community. One of the things that you, a lot of people ride by the college have never been in there, and you think, you know, yeah, there's a lot of four walls in there in the college, and there's a lot of buzz and activities that goes on, but until you actually walk into those doors um, and see, you're, you'd be astounded at, at what we have, the, the technology we have, the modernization that we have. Um, I toured the Bailey Center recently, and I was just thrilled. Every room that I went into was was like walking into a hospital room. It's where we, where we <coughs> train our, our teach our nurses. And, and it's just amazing what's in those walls. I mean, I, I felt like I was in a, a hospital room. I thought I felt like I was in an emergency room. I was in an x-ray room, uh, an MRI room. It was just amazing what's in there. And, and each room that you went into, professors came out just beaming with excitement of what they had there. And, and were telling us that the reasons they were there was because what Cleveland Community College had to offer them as teachers that were not in other colleges. Um, that in major universities, some of the things that we have in our colleges. So, if you ever, haven't ever had the opportunity to go through and visit, stop in one day and ask them if they have any tours going on, if there's an opportunity. So, okay. Would you like to make them? I, I'm very humbled. I, I thank you. Uh, very rarely am I at a loss for words. Uh, oh, no. But, uh, <laughs>
commissioner's consideration. Uh, the Cleveland County Schools has been successful in obtaining additional grant funding through North Carolina, through the state, for additional school resource officers for uh, not only the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office, but also for the Shelby Police Department and the Cle Kings Mountain Police Department. Our Sheriff's Office has got a long and successful history of successful collaborative partnerships with the Cleveland County School System. I think that this program will be one of the best programs to look at with our school resource officer partnership uh, with Cleveland County Schools. This additional grant through North Carolina, uh, again, has been obtained by the school system. It's five additional resource officer positions. Uh, the allocation to the sheriff's office would be, would be for one additional school resource officer. Uh, Sheriff Norman and his staff would uh, position these officers throughout uh, the high school, middle school, and now elementary schools in the county. And the uh, fiscal impact uh, to Cleveland County government would be about $7,180 a year to the Sheriff's Department annual operating budget. And the reason for that is that the grant is a 10-month grant, academic school year grant, and then for the remaining two months that the deputy is employed full-time, that officer is turned back over to Sheriff Norman, and Sheriff Norman uh, takes the resources for those two months and uh, staffs the court system. With that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it over to Sheriff Norman and see if you have anything to add, sir. I don't have anything to add. I think it's a, a step in the right direction. And I call the school system, the county commission, and the sheriff's office for partnership that we have. Appreciate you working on this on this grant as well. Is there any questions about this? Commissioner, you had this uh, uh, the agenda prior to this, so you had a chance to have a look over it, I'm sure. Any questions about this um, additional school resource officer? No question, this is taken in, and knowing your sheriff's department and the task force has been working to provide safety for our school, I think this is definitely a good step in that direction of solving a problem that could occur. And knowing his officers and the people he put in the school, he put well trained employees in the school that can handle situations that arise. I commend him for what he's doing. I'd just like to say, Cheryl, thank you for being proactive. I know this has been a point of concern for you, for you and, and the department for some time about elementary schools, which seem to be a trigger point for some bad things that happen across the country. Uh, so this is not where we need to end up, but it's a good start. And I commend you for being proactive and getting us headed in that direction of protecting the kids in the elementary schools. Thank you. Sheriff Norman, I feel the same way. I feel that you got your your guys out there present a good role model for our students in the school. And not only they're they're to protect, but they also to to be out there in the community with with the kids and let them know that, that hey, it's okay to be around the police officer and police force and and get to know them as a, a, in other areas other than out in the community. So I commend you for what you've already been doing for us, and this just gives the strength in what you're already doing. This uh, this is the first for Cleveland County as far as going into the elementary schools. And uh, again, I, I thank each and every one of you. I thank the school system, Ryan, uh, the partnership. We couldn't have done it with, uh, we couldn't have done it long, but uh, it's just what the team effort did. Thanks so much. And I'd like to say uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to serve on your task force that you had for school safety. Um, and this is definitely, as Commissioner Holbrook uh, mentioned, addressing an initial issue that we've got at, uh, at some of our elementary schools. One thing that this is going to do that, that uh, in all the discussion, that from my understanding is working with the city of Shelby, we're going to free up not only one school uh, SRO, school resource officer, but you're going to have uh, two now because of this one, be able to do this one position. So appreciate you uh, being innovative. It, uh, it basically splits them into elementary schools and any other questions or comments? No, there's a question coming and make a point and we accept it. A motion and a second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is uh, summer funding for school resource officers. And uh, Chair, I'll go far. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, as I said just a second ago, item six 
while it's different than what uh, the board just approved, it is uh, it is a parallel track issue, and I'll try to be brief. Almost ask for permission to put this under consent agenda because how I look at this really is uh, examining the the current partnership with the school system. Brian and I have uh, been working over the last several months to look uh, broad, broadly at our uh, uh, shared responsibilities for all of the SRO positions uh, that are currently funded through the North Carolina Grant Program. And as I said earlier, uh, the, the grant program is a 10-month, two-month partnership with the school system and with Cleveland County government. Uh, the Sheriff's Office has enjoyed uh, over the past several years the uh, opportunity uh, to take the SROs once the academic school year is over and re-employ those uh, uh, positions in the uh, Cleveland County court system. And uh, Sheriff Norman can certainly elaborate on that if there are questions. I think that when Brian Hummel was looking at this particular grant opportunity to expand the program, he and his staff realized that uh, back in 2002, there had been a request to fund the positions on 11 months, one month. And uh, Brian certainly was not here, and a lot of the folks were not here. Uh, the players were different at that time. But basically, there were summer school activities that were going on in the school system that justified having the SRO on the school property available uh, during that 11th month. At some point in time between 2002 and today, that need diminished and uh, in checking with the sheriff's office, now the SRO positions are, are released from the school system for a, two, a full two month period of time. And again, sheriff and his uh, management team put these people into work at work in our court system. So uh, Brian had requested that we take a look at cleaning the partnership up from a financial standpoint to truly reflect a 10 month, two month partnership. We examined that and we felt like that at the time it was uh, appropriate to come forward and ask for permission to do that. The budgetary effect uh, is uh, about $26,300 per year uh, that the Cleveland County uh, Sheriff's Office General Fund that we would have to absorb and that we would have to do the budget for that in next year's budget. And so uh, we're prepared to do that this evening. Sheriff, I'll turn it over to you, see if you have anything to add to that. The only thing I would add is, in the summer months, we bring the school resource officers back in and work in school us. We send the part-time people upstairs, and I'm referring to the courtroom, we send them home. So if we're not depleting our overtime budget or part-time budget. We're using those individuals for that eight and a half or so weeks upstairs. And if, if court breaks down, uh, they'll go to the shift, they'll serve warrants, civil papers, et cetera. Commissioners, you've heard the discussion so far. Is there any questions or you have on, on this issue? No, I, I think it's another one thing, like uh, Tim Matt said, it's one other thing that uh, what times have changed, cleaning up some finances and making it right. I think with the, the sheriff's office, field utilized enforcement as needed. And I know time to time he said, one show on gifts and then give him the option to serve. Any other comments? Those resources give you more flexibility in the court system and the other areas. Sure. There's times that uh, there'll be six court rooms running, a six bailiffs, you've got a guy on the camera that's seven, you've got a flutter that's eight, and you've got a guy at the door that's nine. Uh, three of those are full time employees, the other six are part time employees. So in the summer months, we won't have a problem with going part time. And have it had for the past few years. Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve and a second. Thank you. Any other discussion? I would like to say that this one other thing, this is a fairness issue, I believe. It's, uh, it's, the schools right now are, are really um, paying more than what they should be. And also, the Sheriff's Department is in a, essentially is subsidizing that as well because you're having to use part time people when you could be using. So this, this is going to free up a lot, so I appreciate it. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say, or uh, please raise your right hand. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is consideration of two additional full-time sheriff's deputies. 
Yes, sir, Mr. Chair and Brian, thank you for being here tonight for the school system. Thank you. Truly our pleasure. It's, it's been a tremendous partnership, not only Sheriff Norman, but we, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is consideration of two additional full-time sheriff's deputies uh, that the manager's office, with your approval this evening, would begin to work immediately with the sheriff to establish two additional FTEs, full-time uh, positions, mid-year, uh, in the February time frame, so just past mid-year. Uh, I know that the sheriff's office has continued to monitor uh, sworn officer patrol deputy staffing across the county for <coughs> several years, and I know that the commissioners have been interested in looking at uh, staffing ratios uh, and have shown an interest in trying to make sure that there's adequate uh, resources uh, in the area of patrol, patrol operations. Uh, I've looked at the data that uh, the sheriff has provided me, and for your consideration this evening would be uh, to allow me to use lap salary money that has been identified in the general fund that we would move over to the sheriff's office for the remainder of this fiscal year uh, in order to allow the sheriff to add two uh, full-time deputy positions for operations, and then we would go ahead and plan uh, for these two positions in the budget process, which we're now currently uh, beginning that process, as you know, and we would add those positions when we get the budget for next year. Sure, you got anything you want to say for it? Essentially, it's in the right direction. The patrol function hasn't had an increase in manpower since 2002, I uh, There are currently nine deputies assigned to each year, if that's if everyone's working, everybody's on vacation, sick time, holiday leave, hot time. Um, it, at times it's stretched extremely thin. Uh, we allow two deputies off at a time, uh, no more than two, but oftentimes you may allow two off and something unexpectedly happens at home with another, you're down to six deputies before you realize it. It is a step in the right direction. Uh, each of you know that we're understaffed, and, and I appreciate you taking this into consideration. Uh, and I know the men and women that, uh, that I work with will also. I'd like to say thank you to Sheriff. I know uh, this issue came up at budget time, and we asked for you to be patient, but you've certainly been patient, and I think we are attempting to demonstrate our support. Yes, uh, our community needs to understand that you're understaffed, that when you compare Cleveland County with adjoining counties, we're our population undermanned in law enforcement. And people want to know why they don't see patrols more often this and that and the other, and they justify asking, asking that question. But the answer is very simple. We don't have manpower uh, to compare with other counties. So the, uh, I hope that this is, you will interpret this as a step that the board is attempting to alleviate that problem and at least get us on a, a level playing field with other counties and give you a, a full force to deal with. So yes, thank you for your buying time with us and allow us a little time to get this done. Thank you. I guess the comment I got is like you said, a step in the right direction. Just like the school resource offers, we know that we need more and you think good about violence and your people with our budget and the taxpayer dollars to help us out and I appreciate that. And I say this is only a step in that direction. I guess we will cross the road again when it comes to like we talked about before. But we do appreciate all you're also doing. I do know personally that a lot of times they're understaffed. <coughs> so, yeah. yeah, we thank you for what you guys do and, and do re recognize the patience that you give to us. Give us opportunity to evaluate what the decisions that we need to make too. And I'm sure I make the motion that we approve these deputies. Got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Uh, you might say um, I, I appreciate You've been willing to work with us on this, and uh, uh, even though you're, we know you're understaffed. Um, your your deputies and your department does a tremendous job. Um, there are a lot of times whenever I, 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 it's like I can't count the number of times I pass by a deputy on the way, um, you know, to to the other side of Clinton County. Or it's just y'all strategically are in the right places at the right time where you're visible in the community and you do an outstanding job. So. Uh, I think this is, again, as, as everyone said up here, this is a step in the right direction. So, all right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. 
Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure. Appreciate it. All right. Next item on the agenda is submitting minimum housing code violation, and we'll turn that over to our planning director, Bill Carter. Mostly single family residences. 
you do have a couple of recommendations. Uh, one from the planning board. Excuse me, one from the planning and soil. Isothermal. Um, they recommend to approve, and they did note um, the issue on the site plan where the fall zone for the proposed tower encroaches on to the adjacent property, which is also owned by the same landlord. And the uh, planning board had the same recommendation to the approve, and they recommended a couple of conditions. They re recommended to approve with the with an easement for the follow zone, only adjoining property recorded with retro deeds, and to restrict the lighting to strobe lights during the daytime and red light at night on the top of the job. We do have a representative here tonight. Anyone that you'd like to come forward and, and uh, give us some right I just pull in for the Of, uh, of 
uh, of the building permit first and we began to design and approve the rezoning was approved. Uh, we meet all the other compliance requirements of the ordinance. We have uh, insurance coverage, uh, we comply with all um, applicable safety codes, whether it's the building code, uh, FCC emission standards and the like. Uh, and the uh, the or approved coverage down there for people just who need it on for general day-to-day -day use, but also it improves people's ability to access 911. Um, approximately, I don't have the statistics here for Cleveland County, but I know in Gaston and in um, and, 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 uh, Lincoln County, uh, approximately almost 75% of all 911 calls are made from cell phones now. And so obviously if you were in someone who um, needs to make a 911 call on a cell phone, if you're down there and have no reception, doesn't do any good. So there is a, a beneficial safety component to having better coverage throughout the county, and we believe that this would help better serve the, um, the, the folks here in Cleveland County. And uh, so I, uh, I know I've gone through a more detailed list of everything we've, we've got before, and I don't want to uh, necessarily bore y'all with, <laughs> with all that since you're familiar with a number of the different uh, issues involved. But uh, again, we believe we comply or all the generally accepted and required standards for cell towers, building code, and such. There's a need down there, and we would ask you to uh, approve the rezoning uh, so that we go ahead and put the tower up. And uh, I thank you for your time, and certainly if anyone has any questions, I'll, I'll be happy to answer them. Any questions? I've got one. Uh, I guess I'm curious about the uh, this program to be a white line or a red line. Um, I understand. I guess we can ask them the airport in that area, and it's a clear light, the strobe, sometimes flying. The sun's rising, you may not see the white. And the white strobe. Uh, I don't know. You can, as a pilot, you can see those strobe lights. Well, I know. I, 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 I flew with Lonnie, though, but you. You get the sun coming in that direction and you're flying low, especially approaching the airport. Well, this is not My right. question is, you know, with, with the, the red during the day or red at night, I, mean, what, <coughs> I, I would suggest to check to make sure that there would be no hazard created. Well, Mr. Rogers, I will tell you this uh, that those parameters are what the kind of standard light that they already use. American Tower utilizes on its towers. Um, I, I don't know if they do it everywhere. I know it's in North Carolina, and I imagine they probably have that fairly standard um, uh, everywhere they put up towers. So I, I think the strobe that they use is one that um, my understanding is that it has been utilized on numerous occasions. And it's been approved and it's acceptable. So uh, I do know they guys do it. Um, they come in pretty well. I'm just asking questions. Well, looking at Section 10, which says that the airport has already determined, or, or the FAA has determined that there, there is no hazards near navigation, I believe that that would be that they've already evaluated that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would call that. You don't have to light it at all. It's <laughs> under 200 feet. You don't want to get on it at all. Well, I suspect. I would suspect that the, this type of the lighting that they use has been approved. I, I can't say that. Okay, I, I imagine that the FAA has, or they wouldn't still be using it, um, you know, after having put up you know, towers over a number of years. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak for or against the proposed ordinance? Anyone wish to speak for or against the proposed ordinance? Yes. Come forward, state your name and address. I'm Carl Johnson from uh, Shelby. I just have one question if there was any study done to determine any impact, negative impact, or positive impact on the residential area. Uh, do you know how much, how many residents are? Has that been given a voice of 
Um, we know where the area is that it's today. So how many hands the Bob River Greenway area? Correct. We don't uh, we don't require them to provide any data on who they're trying to serve. Uh, they typically provide the coverage maps just showing what the existing coverage of service is, but not how many potential customers. My question is really for what is the negative impact for the property owners and the value of their properties in the tower. Having lived in areas where there are large towers, it can't have a negative impact. And I'm just wondering if there's been any consideration for that. Thank you for your question. Any comments? I think that's what they're making the default is all going to be listed on the deeds reported for what he's asking. Were taken into consideration in the event even the property was sold because there's no resident on leaving the property as big as the area is. And with the falls on on the guy's other piece of property, if he sells it, it will be disclosed that it's in a fall zone. So that was, I think that would take that into consideration. If we look at the same way, we look at safety issues, yeah. but we don't look at the property value issues. Anyone else wish to speak for or against? Sir, do you speak for again? Yes. You'll, you'll come up, state your name and address. I'm Randy Anthony. I own the property. Okay. And, uh, and <clears throat> as far as uh, downgrading the property or what about, you know, be a thumb up, I'm not going to develop that property. And, matter of fact, uh, you know, I'm I bought it just here, and there's no houses on none of that property or even close to it besides my house. I'm the only resident on that property. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak for or against? There is none. I'll declare the public hearing closed. Commissioners, any discussion? I'll take the Yes, 
questions? All right. Declare the public hearing open for this ordinance. Anyone wish to speak for or against? Please come forward. State your position. Anyone wish to speak for or against? Please come forward. Seeing none, I'll declare this public hearing closed. Commissioners, any discussion? To approve, and got a second. Mr. Allen, thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Commissioner, this is the last item on the agenda tonight of the commissioner's report. And if I can, I'd like to start with Mr. Allen. I'm just going to the uh, announcement that we had for the uh, RX card, the discount card, was uh, we took it off to next Wednesday, I mean tomorrow. Um, the Boys and Girls Club is going to have it at the uh, Turning Point Academy at 11 o'clock. Because of the weather last week, it was postponed, so if you would like to join, you are welcome to do that. And take advantage of the discount card that's in the county available to you. Mr. Questions? Yeah, got a couple of things. We've got a uh, Facebook page that I'll be hearing coming up. Sixth, from the DOT with their project, regional project for the MPO. It's very important if anyone's got any comments. And it's going to be at the uh, DOT building, right? The bill, yes, out across next to the fairground. And one of, one of the projects are going to be would be the widening of I 85 from Belmont to. 74, which will play a big role in moving traffic, you know, east and west when we get the bypass done with some of the other uh, 46. The 46. 46 on the 6. On the 6. 46. So anyone wishing to have the input needs to be there. And it's very important that they hear from the public because this is going to gauge some of the projects that we have in the area. Okay, another one I read in the paper this morning with teen violence. This is the month for teen violence that they're kicking it off. And what it is, teen relationships, a lot of times they say 50% of them turned into a violent act with abuse or something with, with teenagers or with their affairs that they had. So I'd like to say that you know, we at least acknowledge that uh, this month is, is for it. They uh, had a uh, key month. By the council meeting today, had a good meeting, went down to Southern Power, and they're, they're up and running. And I'm surprised because they had tents around the building. And I said, what, What's the problem with the tents around the building? He says, Our air conditioner heating unit wasn't made for cold weather, so we had to put tents on them and heat them up. <laughs> <laughs> but he said that they the, the company's coming in to work on it. But, uh, Anyway, we had a good visit and uh, had a good month. We've got several things coming up in the, in the next month. So, Commissioner Holbrook. Uh, three or four things. One, uh, we've had a uh, chamber board meeting, had the economic development board meeting, and Ms. Padgett did a good job for the first meeting. Retiring, we're looking forward to your leadership there. And also, uh, the chamber banquet. They had an excellent crowd, good numbers, and we had a firefighter uh, meeting last Thursday, I believe, up in Taser, but we all enjoyed it. That's about it. Other than we do have an economic development project visiting the county this month, so keep your fingers crossed as we continue to work those projects. Uh, Chairman Thomas, I'd like to also mention that um, Saturday I spent the majority of the day uh, with the Fire Association, and we visited every all the uh, uh, rural fire houses around the county and um, toured them and talked to the fire chiefs and each one of them. And it was a nice experience to see what they had going on there and some of the needs that they have in the fire, fire departments in the county. Anything to say? Yeah, one thing you recognize, Ms. Badgey, but her husband was also chairman of the Chamber of Many Years Ago. This is the first husband wife couple to have both been chamber, uh, chairman of the chamber. I think that's a very unique situation for Cleveland County to have. 
<laughs> and Mr. Patrick still stays very active in the chamber. I think he's pitching in a pretty important role right now, so I appreciate what you're doing there. I did just want to remind everybody of our employee recognition event next Tuesday at uh, 12 o'clock at Bell Grand Center, where we recognize our employees for their years of service. Anything else? I'd like to say uh, a special thank you to um, Sheriff for being here tonight. Also, uh, um, Jeff Lefford, Chief and uh, Shelby. Uh, we had a, a couple of point in time um, count um, last week. Um, that I wanted to be able to take part in. It was uh, basically a, a census of our homeless population. Uh, we focused primarily in, in Shelby. And uh, they were invited. Um, you guys really know what's going on in the county, both the Sheriff's Department and the Police Department. So I appreciate your, your help on that. And one thing I'd like to mention on uh, economic development uh, that I don't know if we've mentioned before, but uh, you know, our people in our county are probably our biggest economic development tool that we've got. Um, I was um, at a fast food restaurant uh, in Kings Mountain uh, with my kids, and uh, there were some people that came in. They were obviously uh, uh, business people coming from out of town and don't know what they were here for, uh, but they were in front of me, and the, the, the lady that was working the, the counter, her name was Amber, they were better before, but Amber. Um, really went out of her way to make them feel welcome and feel at home. And she made a good impression on those, on those individuals. Uh, matter of fact, when they walked away, I heard them talking about how, how nice she was. So, you know, our residents in the county really make a huge difference. And they, they're oh, they're one of our biggest economic development tools that we've got. So, uh, but I appreciate everything our team was doing. I'll tell you a very interesting thing. Uh, I was with an economic development project taken from out for a quick sandwich, there are your words. Quick sandwich, we ran up running into this place and there was a line there and uh, the person up next to the front came back there and said, oh, Mr. Holbrook, you here on business or just taking your time to eat? I said, well, I guess was we're in a pretty, pretty big hurry, but we'll wait our time. And I said, no, 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 no you, you come on up here. Or I went up there and uh, ordered our sandwich went over and sat down. The gentleman I was with me said uh, to the waitress, said, give me that person's ticket over there. Uh, said, I've been to a lot of places. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, makes you feel good. We're in a unique place. Yeah. All right. That being said, 